Thank you, Senator Kerrigan. Yeah. I think I heard a second. Yeah. All right, the motion before uh, the subcommittee is to continue uh, Nick, Delegate Nick Freitas's House Bill uh, 541 that he requested to be continued. Uh, it came up last week. We all like the concept. We just don't think the bill's in the place yet. And I think he agrees with that. So we're going to work on that. As may is fair, the motion to continue will vote aye. Aye. May is opposed that. Um, on a five vote vote, that bill is recommended for continuation to the 2019 session. Um, Delegate Herring, you're up with House Bill 1054. Good morning. Uh, this bill deals with expedited partner therapy. It's a clinical practice uh, treating sex, par sex partners, um, a patient's diagnosed with chlamydia or gonorrhea by providing prescriptions or medications to the patient to take the partner without the health care provider first examining the partner. This uh, method of practice is already exists in 41 states. Um, and the reason I introduced the bill is that there's an increase of uh, these two STDs which can cause um, sterilization, basically, um, as well as uh, terrible infections. Um, except for syphilis, the partner management through the current patient referral process is not making a difference with the spread of STDs. In Virginia, 38,871 people were diagnosed with chlamydia in 2016 and 10,835 with gonorrhea. This is an increase of 8,000 new cases in a year from the total of 2014. This bill will allow physicians to prescribe limited doses of medication without seeing the other patient to prevent the spread of the disease. Um, and studies have shown that it's reduced the number of infections by chlamydia of up to 20% with expedited partner therapy and gonorrhea 50%. Um, the, so that's basically the bill. The bill also has, an, it's basically, we'll have a work group to monitor, this will be done by, only by physicians of the Department of Health, so it is limited, um, and they will see whether, and be able to examine whether there is a reduction <coughs> in the disease using, those two diseases using uh, this therapy, and there is a, a sunset clause on the bill. Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, and the sunset would be 2020, Senator Carrico. So, what other Understanding, if I, if I can respond, yes, is that there is personal evaluation of whether there's a likelihood that that partner will go see a physician. So my understanding is is that there will be an inquiry and attempt to get the partner in, and that why these states have um, chose to utilize this is because the MD risk associated with prescribing the antibiotics is lower than the risk of spreading the disease to others or reinfecting the partner. So, so they're not, Mr. Chair. So they're not just going to be able to prescribe it without seeing the patient. Well, what I would say is there's an attempt. In my understanding, there's an attempt to see the patient. It's not just a really, I'm just going to go ahead and give you prescriptions for other people. Yeah, just for like no, I mean, yes, more sure. medication. And there is an attempt here. Do, um, are there any other questions from the subcommittee? So the questions that I also um, like that you'll be addressing, if you choose, uh, is um, one, how much medicine do we plan to give and what 
what concerns are there about that medicine being out there with someone that we haven't been able to see and prescribe to? So uh, please identify yourself and come on up and share your thoughts. Sure. My name is Dr. Laurie Berlano. I direct the Office of Epidemiology at the Virginia Department of Health. So I'll start with your question. The medications for the practice of APT for chlamydia and gonorrhea are single dose, so one pill of two different antibiotics, depending on the condition. Uh, I'd say the risks with these medications are the risk of adverse events are extremely low. I'd say the risk for untreated chlamydia far outweigh the risk of one dose of azithromycin, which is a biotic. And Senator Carrickville, will you repeat your questions? What about the question of where, where do we do this with any other prescriptions? I'm not I'm not aware that we do because the law what the law is doing is is changing a requirement for the examination specific to these two conditions. The recommendation to treat sex partners that have had sexual contact within 60 days is in place right now from the CDC. So if you see a patient with chlamydia, the recommendation is to identify those partners within the previous 60 days. But you don't prescribe the prescription. The preferred, the preferred action is a clinical evaluation. If the provider has concerns that that patient is not going to be able to come in or won't come in, then yes, this is an essential tool to get that partner treated and to prevent reinfection of the patient that's in front of the provider. All right, um, there not being any other questions, is there anything that you'd like to say since you're already up here and if you think this is a good policy for us to pursue or any other concerns we should be thinking about? Sure, I'd say that uh, my peers in 41 other states uh, have made this practice illegal <coughs> and it's, an, it's deemed an essential and evidence-based and proven tool by the Centers for Disease Control. The health department supports this bill. So, can I share uh, one? I have a question, and Senator Kirko's got a question. I just don't want to forget my question. Sure. How long have the other 41 states been doing this? Is uh, this something that's been in the last five years or something that's been 20 years? And we're just depends, a little... it depends on the state. Like but some states have been doing it for 20 years. Is that the I don't know. Sense? Yeah, that's uh, consistent. I don't know. Yeah. I was just curious if yeah. there was a campaign right now in the last five oh, years. Oh, no, no. I know at, at the minimum, it's been since 2006, and that's at the minimum. I think it's been longer than that. Um, there's no campaign. Um, but but and I could, if I can add to the information about it, um, it's recommended by the CDC, but you all should also the American Medical Association, Society for Adolescent Health and Medicine, American Academy of Pediatrics, also uh, support this method of therapy. Yeah. Of the 41 other states, do you have statistics that show what the decrease in the spread of this is? Uh, that's a that's lengthy answer. I can get this data to you. I'd say it's been uh, it's been demonstrated by two very large clinical trials that the statistic is very cited. A 20% decrease in the prevalence of chlamydia mm -hmm. and up to a 15% decrease in the prevalence of gonorrhea. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. No other questions from the subcommittee for him. doctor. Is there anyone that's got, I usually like to do the concerns first so they help with the questions. Also, is there anyone that has concerns in the audience? Seeing that, is there anyone that would like to speak in support of it? Yes, sir. I'm Nicole Kiefer on behalf of the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. We support this bill. Um, it's briefly stated by Dr. Ferlana, it's done in 41 states. Um, we feel it's a good practice to prevent reinfection, as was stated by the conclusion of the bill. Hope that it will help prevent the spread of these two diseases, and also, um, as she said, there's an indication, there's a potential for um, infertility if not treated. So that's my primary concern and primary reason for support. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Matthew Stanley, representing the Virginia Affiliated in the American College of Nursing and Wives. Uh, nursing and wives in the state are another frontline women's healthcare practitioner, and they also support this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to address some of the concerns here. This is this is best practice, 
and this is where um, clinical medicine and code don't always intersect well. I'm a firm believer in supporting bona fide patient physician relationship, but there is significant risk for women getting reinfected. Chlamydia is on a significant steep increase for infections in the United States, especially on younger women, and it can cause serious illness, hospitalization, surgical complications, and infertility is alluded to. So it's not ideal, would rather see the patient, but choosing between the two lesser evils of an untreated partner or um, you know, not seeing a patient, the lesser evil is not seeing a patient and treating them. And so I would support this one carve out for that bona fide patient physician relationship. Um, and it is been a, a, a standard practice for obstetrics and gynecology, recommended standard practice for a long time. So we've got a motion uh, properly seconded to recommend a report on this bill. Is there any other discussion from the subcommittee members? All right, seeing that as many as favor the motion to recommend a report will vote aye. Aye. Those opposed will vote no. I'm going to abstain to make sure there's some evidence of the other states that have done this that it actually is. All right, so your bill is recommended for report on a 501 vote. Um, you and the supporters of your bill should try to get with Senator Carrico either this afternoon or tomorrow because we'll be considering this Thursday morning. Okay. Um, and depending on how the conversation with Senator Carriker goes, then you'll know if you need to come to full committee or not. Um, I'll present the bill either way. I think you've got Senator Donovan who has a lot of good information she'll share on it. Um, but you might end up having um, a no vote in there. So meet with Senator Carriker this afternoon or tomorrow. Thank you. I appreciate it. And. Uh, and now the bill that we've been building up to to hear about, uh, House Bill 886 from Delegate Stahl. We put the whole schedule around this one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, before you use House Bill um, 886, um, Mr. Chairman, you may be shocked to find out that two physicians, when they're faced with the same facts, sometimes do not agree. Yeah. <laughs> we always agree with this one, so. <laughs> I'm in trouble now. <laughs> House Bill 866 um, simply requires that when there is a disagreement between a referring physician and receiving physician, particularly with the, um, or specifically with the patient of uh, psychiatric patients, and that disagreement is based on toxicology results. Um, that a third party, that the toxicologist comes in and gives their opinion on the importance of those toxicology, toxicology results. So uh, what we all, will all can see is somebody will present to the emergency department, they will have attempted suicide um, taking Tylenol. And uh, Tylenol, um, the levels come back, and where the Tylenol levels may be elevated, they're not threatening levels, or they're not critical levels. However, when you try to get that placement for that psychiatric um, uh, patient into a psychiatric hospital, the ho psychiatric hospital will refuse the patient because of the elevated um, acetaminophen levels um, versus uh, critical acetaminophen levels. That prevents um, uh, or delays the treatment of that individual and sometimes uh, prevents the placement of the individuals. What we're trying to do here is remove barriers to take and get placement and rapid treatment um, for these psychiatric uh, patients. Uh, again, the, the facts are the facts, the levels of the cinnamon are, are what they are. Um, sometimes this can delay treatment for 24 to 36 hours as the, the receiving psychiatric facility asks for two or three follow-on acetaminophen levels to make sure that they go all the way back down to normal. And that's an individual sitting in an emergency room um, a pod for 36 um, or more hours um, waiting for placement unnecessarily when you have a third party to come in and say um, that is not a critical level. Thank you, uh, Delegate Stolle. Are there any questions from the subcommittee? Uh, Senator Peek. Delegate Stolle. Obviously one of the ER doctors is saying it's not critical and they're good to go. 
other places saying no, we don't want them because we still got it. And, and is this maybe the third person? Does this bill just mean their opinion goes no matter what? Absolutely not. Okay. So what this says is all it does is he provides, uh, the, the state toxicologist provides um, information to help facilitate the conversation. And so it's like getting a second opinion on the acetaminophen level from an expert in that area. Okay, and the expert that's gotten here, um, the qualifications they have to have and um, the accreditation. Any other questions for the patron? <laughs> Sandra Parker. Question. Uh, would the toxicologist be someone who's at one of the poison centers in Virginia? That is the intent, is that it's at one of the state poison, and that is the ready reference for the emergency department, and the easiest to get on a three-way call with the three, but with the other doctors. Okay, that'd be a good thing. Um, Delegate Despali, what's your anticipation of how long this will take, just so we know? I think we've got a pretty good read on the subcommittee where we are, but how long do you think this will take? To get the individual on the phone? Yeah. So um, most most of the hospitals now have what they call call centers, which is actually um, a trained individual or a nurse that sits there um, and receives <coughs> incoming calls. And so uh, all these calls are now recorded between the emergency room doctor and the psychiatric um, hospital and the receiving physician. Um, that individual will actually party line in. That's probably a really old term. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it will bring in the third um, individual, so that that um, call center <laughs> call center individual would bring in yeah. um, the toxicology uh, person. They can do that pretty rapidly. All right, thank you, guys. So I think that completes the questions from the subject. Just, center part. Just to add on that, um, we had three poison centers that serve Virginia: one in Charlottesville, one here, and one in D.C. And all of them are twenty-four-seven. I mean, that's their job. So and that's it. Uh, Sam Donovan. Just a comment. I'm really disappointed that Senator Barker was going to come in for the evening. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I skipped that on the phone. Yeah, I thought there was something coming. Um, I still remember a teacher mentioning that in class once, and it sounded fascinating. Um, is there anyone in the audience that has any concerns about this bill that you don't think we've discussed up here? All right. We've got a motion uh, properly seconded to recommend a report to the full committee. Is there any further discussion? May is favor that motion, we'll vote aye. Aye. May is oppose that. And on a six to zero vote, it's recommended for report. And you do not need to come for this specific bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And that completes our docket.